this is the main area of the Mountain View campus. There are 20,000 employees at Google, and I think it's around eight or 9,000 are here in Mountain View. This building is, is a fairly green building. A lot of the materials they use, like these carpets and the chairs and everything, are cradle to cradle certified. If one of these carpets gets stained or gets messed up, it's basically a square that they can just lift up and send it back and put a, put a new one in here. When they were redoing this building, they had all these doors to all these offices and they didn't really know what to do with it. And so they kind of figured, well, you know, we don't want to throw it in the landfill, so let's just put them right on top of there so there are doors up there that lead to absolutely nowhere. <laughs> One of the nice perks about Google is the fact that we have free food uh, for breakfast, lunch, dinner. And you're actually looking at one of the gardens here. Um, we try to get a lot of the food that's eaten in the cafes to be locally harvested. There's actually one cafe that's called Cafe 150. And the whole concept of the cafe is that all of the food comes from within a 150 mile radius of the Google campus. From the founders on down, this is Northern California, a lot of people are really interested in different green initiatives. So as a result, that's sort of ingrained in the culture at Google. I see there's a lot of bikes. Yeah, there are lots of bikes on campus. It's a fairly big campus actually, so a lot of people try to bike when they're going from a meeting from one building to another. There's actually an initiative that's uh, called self-powered commuting, and it's every time that you somehow get to Google campus, whether you're biking, you're walking, you actually can go online and sign in that day and click a button, and then Google donates money to a charity of your choice. There are 20,000 employees at Google, and that is, yeah, it's a large group of people who are interested in trying to live a green, you know, environmentally friendly life. So if you can get a lot of those people to be commuting in more efficient ways, and there are a number of initiatives that are dedicated to that, then that's something that can make a difference. There's so many uh, hybrids. Yeah, there are. For a while, there actually was a initiative to encourage people to get hybrids, so people would get money from Google to do it. Yeah. And so when you, when you're right, when you walk around campus, you just see a lot of hybrids. Yeah. By no means is it secret that Google uses energy. I mean, that's certainly, it is a big expense, and that's why we're really interested in efficiency, making sure that our data centers are really efficient. So much of what Google's about is finding a scalable solution. So it's, yeah, let's take care of our portion of it, certainly, and be responsible. But in addition to that, let's actually try to make a bigger impact than just taking care of all of our portion of our footprint. When Google went public at its IPO, the founders issued a letter kind of addressing the principles of the company. And they said, we're going to tell you this up front, that 1% of equity and profit goes to what we're, something called Google.org, which is going to be the philanthropic arm of the company. If you don't like this, that's fine. Don't buy our stock. <laughs> and in Google.org, there's clear initiatives around green efforts and around promoting clean energy. So one of the, the main initiatives in Google.org is something called RE less than C, which is renewable energy cheaper than coal. And the idea here is, until the price of renewable energy at scale is cost competitive with coal, it's probably not going to be adopted in the, state, in the way that it really needs to for us to cut back on carbon emissions. So it's an effort that we have some engineers on campus who are working, who made some investments, done some grants, done some advocacy and policy work on trying to get the cost of certain renewables down. And that's, that's a huge thing, actually. It's, I mean, it's huge. You know, Google can, is one, one of many, many players in it and can have a role in it. Not going to find the solution ourselves, certainly. Recharge it, is that a Google organization, or is that just... Yeah, Recharge is an initiative within Google.org that's this initiative to encourage the adoption of plug-in transportation. And so there are a number of parts of it we've done few grants and investments in this area. We've done a lot of advocacy work. And then we have a fleet of cars on campus that we've done a lot of experiments on, actually. So there are people who can come down here and sign out a car, it kind of works like a zip car sort of thing. And if I have a meeting off campus, I can go sign out a car and take the car off campus. Or if I have an errand that I need to run, I can go sign out a car and take it off campus. And the engineers have been doing a lot of experiments on it. And they actually published their results and figured out that these plug-in cars were getting around 90 miles per gallon. One thing about Google is that it's keenly interested in data, and so in a number of ways they're trying to get data. So these electric cars, for example, it wasn't just, oh, let's talk about the cars and that'll be great. It's, let's talk about the cars and let's also do some experiments on them to try to understand how people drive these and are there ways to get better mileage out of the cars and how well are the cars actually performing and what if we tweak this, then would the cars perform better? Before we started with Recharge It and started with our plug-in initiative, some people talked about plug-in vehicles, certainly, but it wasn't a major emphasis. Um, 
And now in the stimulus plan, actually, there's a lot of money that's been dedicated towards plug-in cars, which is really exciting. And President Obama has uh, made a goal of having one million plug-in cars on the road by 2015, which is exactly the number that we were shooting for. So that was really exciting for us. Right now we're under a solar carport here. So these are all solar panels that line uh, the, the, the roof right here. So a lot of the energy that's going into these cars comes from the solar panels. So there's solar panels on a number of the buildings and it's one of the largest corporate solar installations. It's, I think it's around 1.6 megawatt installation, which basically means that for the buildings where there's solar panels, it powers 30% of the peak load. They put in the money uh, a while ago, there are 9,000 some odd panels that are, that are at Google. They put in the money to install it and certainly had to put some capital up front, but it's gonna pay for itself in six and a half years. And after six and a half years, any energy that we get from the solar panels is essentially free, it's savings. So if you're looking at a business quarter to quarter, yeah, you're taking a big hit up front because you have to put in the capital to install the PV panels. But if you're looking at the long run, it's again another effort that makes a lot of environmental sense and makes a lot of business sense. What do you guys think about solar concentrators and about companies that want to actually produce energy that can be in the short term competitive with coal? Yeah, we're actually quite bullish on a number of solar uh, technologies such as solar thermal. We think that photovoltaic is great um, and we have a lot of it on campus, but ultimately it is significantly more expensive than coal. So in our effort for RA Lesson C to find renewable energies that are cheaper, we've invested in two companies, eSolar and BrightSource, and $10 million in each, which work on solar thermal. What do you guys think about the smart grid idea? The idea of creating a, a grid that actually works similar to the internet? If you ask anybody what is the smart grid, they'll give you an infinite amount of different definitions. So, but I think in general, the concept of having a smarter grid, having a smarter, greener grid is incredibly important. And it's something that at Google we're really interested in because we're an information company, we're a technology company. Hopefully we can have some, uh, some effect in helping to make sure that people are running their lives more efficiently. And that's why we've come up with Google Power Meter, which is a service that allows people to understand their electricity use, and telling consumers, hey, here's a graph of your energy use over the last certain period. And you can look at that and say, and change the light bulbs and realize, wow, when I change the light bulbs, my energy use drops to this extent. So the more that people have the information, the more that they're enabled to make changes that really won't affect their day-to-day -day life that much, but it'll actually help them save money. We've seen studies that show just by having this information about your energy use, you save between 5 and 15% just off the bat, just by doing very small changes. So this area here is actually one of the main cafes, and during the election, most of the presidential candidates actually came to Google, um, which is very cool. So I was actually here when then Senator Obama was here speaking, so he spoke from the stage there. And, and this Eric place Smith, was just right? packed. Wasn't Eric Smith the one that was yeah, interviewing him? Eric didn't in a stage. Google ad interview? <laughs> yep, that's right. I read your, your CEO was in the team of advisors of President Obama, right? Yeah. Is, is that right? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't in those meetings, so I don't really know what they discussed, but I know it was a, a combination of talking about economic issues and technology issues and some energy issues. And You think Google, even being a huge company with a, with a big impact in all the world, can preserve the, the respect as a company, as a brand? Uh, you have the Don't Be Evil to and all these things. I think that we, we definitely want to. We continue to strive, we strive to be an innovative company. We think for Google Power Meter, for example, we know that we do information pretty darn well. And if we can bring our skills in information and technology to this area of energy efficiency and be able to reach a lot of people, because Google has a broad reach, and we think that Google is positioned to have an impact.